Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to show you how to paint an alien seascape. First we set up our perspective lines and the basic horizon. We're going for a very simple three point perspective in this painting and there's no angling on the horizon, it's just going to be a flat horizon as if we're looking out from this patch of sand that will be in the foreground. I used a photo texture on the ocean and am now adjusting the colours and the sand so that they look more natural and subtle on the painting. Now I'm adding the basic forms and structures in the landscape uh, and this is just kept as a basic sketch so that it can be adjusted later. I'm not really feeling too attached to anything right now. Uh, all of this can just change later on in the painting and you'll see that I actually do change some of this as we move forward. My goal with this painting is to have a cool alien landscape that has different forms moving off into the distance and allows me to put in multiple types of fauna within the landscape itself to give it some life. Uh, as you'll see, I'm adding elements to the foreground, the midground, and into the background. And this is designed to give us a transition uh, that allows the eye to move throughout the painting. So right now I'm just experimenting with different forms and fauna in the landscape itself. and. What I'm trying to get right now is just a feeling for the painting and what I think will work as a composition. The individual forms themselves, uh, I'm trying to make them seem uh, realistic but also different at the same time because this is an alien landscape but the creatures and the environment itself need to be rooted in reality. So this is a primarily aquatic planet and I wanted the uh, flying animals to also reflect that aquatic feeling. Uh, as you can see I'm painting in sky manta rays and uh, other forms, just experimenting with what may work. When I paint the clouds, I begin by blocking in the clouds in grey. Uh, here we can see that I'm just trying to establish the basic forms of the clouds and not trying to get too technical right away. Uh, I can always add detail and add form as I go. It's important to remember that clouds are fundamentally 3D objects and so when you paint them in the landscape, Clouds that are off in the distance will tend to be lighter and mix in with the atmosphere of the planet more than clouds that will be uh, closer to the viewer. Clouds that are closer to the viewer will tend to have stronger contrasts of light and dark. So I adjusted the composition of the painting and put in some basic lights and darks for the clouds. Now I'm just going to show you how I did the structure of the foreground and made it look more realistic. I put the rocks under the texture overlay of the ocean itself and then added a second texture overlay of a different type of water photo to then uh, define the forward area of the water near the sand. Then I painted over the top of that to make the photos uh, adjust more into the painting and look more painterly essentially. So 
So now I'm just adding color overlays to the island itself. Uh, the island was a photo texture that I then painted over the top of. The color overlays are just allowing the island to sit within the painting more naturally. It would stand out less. Essentially what I'm doing is adding color from the ocean into the shadows and color from the sky into the lights as these two sources would be the primary colors that are reflecting into those areas. So I've jumped ahead a little bit here. Uh, I painted the sky rays and the land whales in after finishing off the island and now I'm just going to focus on showing you how I painted in the clouds. The clouds have a similar structure to the water in that I added a texture overlay to the basic forms that I had painted in earlier steps and this gives me some basic inspiration for how I can then go ahead and paint over the top of those forms to make the clouds look more painterly and also at the same time uh, the forms appear more uh, realistic to the viewer's eyes. It's important to strike a balance between how painterly the effect looks and how realistic it looks. This just mostly depends upon your goal with the painting. Obviously a basic uh, concept painting won't need to look as realistic as a fully rendered and detailed matte painting. In the final steps of the painting I'm mostly just trying to define where the shadows and the lights are in the, the clouds and also to define the mid values. Thanks for watching Dan's Art Show. Please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, it really helps to make the channel grow and I look forward to bringing you more videos. Bye.